In an earlier lesson, we learned that we can reuse components by passing data from the parent component to the child with props. While props are great, they create a strict parent-child relationship. The parent can pass values to the child, but the child will always be in control of the HTML. A slot is a tag that allows the parent component to embed content, including HTML elements, in a child. To create a slot, we add an open and close slot tag in the child components template, where we want the overriding content from the parent to appear. When we instantiate the component in the parent's template, we add the overriding content between the component's open and close tags. For our example, we have a component called postcard. Inside it, we've registered a prop called content in a div and added some styling. In the root app component, we have two instances of postcard with simple values for the props. If we take a look in the browser, we see the prop content displayed in the cards. Now, let's go back to the postcard and replace the prop with a slot element. Then, in the root app components template block, we'll remove the prop from the component instances and change the self-closing tags to open and close ones. For the overriding content in the first instance, we'll use a heading, an image from Lorem Pixum, and a button. For the second instance, we'll just use a picture. If we save and take a look in the browser, we can see that the cards each have their own content, but they also still have the styling from the child component. View allows us to specify default content in the slot if the parent doesn't provide anything to override it with. To do that, we specify content inside the open and close slot tags of the child component. As an example, let's say that we want our card to show a message if no content is defined for it in the parent. We'll start in the postcard and add a heading and paragraph between the slot tags. Then, in the root app component, we'll add two postcard instances in the template block. One instance is a self-closing tag, and the other is an open and close tag, without anything inside. If we save and take a look in the browser, the two new instances will show the text we defined in the child component slot tag. Sometimes, we'll want to have predefined structure and content in the child component and only control some of the content from the parent. As an example, the cards button can be the same for all the instances, but the heading and image should be different. View allows us to have multiple slots in a single component. However, to ensure that the content we provide in the parent doesn't override the wrong slot in the child, View requires us to name each slot element. To name a slot, we attach the name attribute to the slot element and specify a unique name as its value. We're allowed to leave one slot from a group without a name. View will treat the unnamed slot as the default slot and give it the name default behind the scenes. It should be noted that the default slot and default slot content are not the same. The default slot is simply a slot that we don't manually name. View will give it a name behind the scenes, which just happens to be default. Default slot content, on the other hand, is specified between slot tags. An unnamed slot won't act as a location for the component's default content. Once a slot has been named, we'll need to specify which slot we want to provide content for in the parent. To do that, we surround the content we want to override the slot with, with open and close template tags. Then, we attach the vSlot directive to the template element to tell view which slot we want to override. As mentioned before, we're allowed to leave one slot unnamed in the child component. View then names it default behind the scenes. When we override the unnamed slot, we use default as the name in the vSlot directive. To demonstrate, let's change our example to have one named and one default slot.
Next, we'll fill in the slots in the root app component. If we save and head over to the browser, the card shows the title, image, and button as we expect. But this time, some elements of the card are predefined in the child. Because vSlot is used so much, the view team created a shorthand for it. All we need to do is replace the vSlot and colon with a hash symbol. As an example, let's use the shorthand in the root app component. If we run the example in the browser, everything still works as expected. In the component events lesson, we learned how to emit data from a child component to its parent with event binding. Slot props, known as scope slots in Vue 2, is a way to do the same when we're working with slots. We make a prop available to the parent by binding it to a slot in the child with the vbind directive. As its value, we specify the data we want to send to the parent. The vslot directive can receive the data from a prop in its value. The data will be available as an object, so we can use dot notation to access the prop. As an example, let's say the title for our card is defined in the config object, a postcard. We can use a slot prop to send the title to the parent. Now, we can receive the data in the root app component. The slot prop object name can be anything you want. We chose the letter P. If we save and take a look in the browser, we see the post title that was defined in the child component. So, the data was successfully sent from the child to the parent. A more practical example would be to send the current iteration of a v4 loop to the parent. The parent will then be able to have control over each iteration. If we want to get more information about the slots in our component, we can use a special instance variable. To access a named slot, we use dollar sign slot followed by the slot name with dot notation. If a slot is unnamed, we specify the name as default. We can use this information for some defensive programming. For example, let's say we only want to show the blog card when it has a title. In the root app component, let's add two more postcard instances at the top of the template block. Once as a self-closing element, and once as an open and close element. If we save and head over to the browser, only the card with the static title shows up. In the next video, we'll learn how to switch between components while retaining data without routing. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.